All right, so now we're doing lab seven, which is the elasticity lab, the dowel rod. Once again, I didn't have a dowel rod, so I used my crutch. You need uh, some masking tape. Um, I've got some scotch tape that I've been using. I also have out our pretty purple duct tape, just in case. You need a metric ruler. One came in your pack. You need ring hooks. You need two of them. These, these little snaps right here are the ring hooks. Okay. You need your selection of rubber bands. For this lab, we need a thin one, a medium one, and a thick one. And then you need masses. You need 100 grams. Remember, our contraption that we hook it up to is 50 grams. So the hook, along with a 50 gram mass, makes 100. And then you can use these 50 gram masses um, to make a 200 gram total mass and a 300 gram total mass. All right, so we're ready to start the lab. Um, you need to print out your lab write-up or pull it up on your computer. First thing, what's the goal of the lab or the question that you're trying to answer? Um, if you read in your lab booklet, it talks about how do elastic materials respond to force, right? That's what we're looking at. So which observations, experiments, or lesson materials helped you form your hypothesis? You need to be specific in this. Uh, refer back to the lessons, refer back to past knowledge, whatever, but be specific. Don't just say uh, by reading or um, the lessons. That's not specific enough to get full credit. Then you need to state your hypothesis. Remember the, pro the, the question or the goal is to find out how elastic materials respond to force. So now, based on what you know, you need to say something along the line of, I think elastic materials respond to force by whatever, and you need to finish it. But you need to have some sort of an educated guess on what elastic materials are going to do when they are subjected to force, okay? Now you can start the actual lab procedure, and you already have a data table. Let me get this in focus here. You already have a data table to fill out. You've got thin rubber band, medium rubber band, thick rubber band. You have the original length in centimeters, and then you're going to record the stretch length in centimeters when you add 100, 200, and 300 gram masses on, I believe, if I remember correctly. Okay. When I looked in my lab materials, I had a thick rubber band, I had a medium rubber band, I didn't really have a thin rubber band. I had another rubber band that was really long. So I rummaged through my husband's um, desk drawers and I found this really thin rubber band. So you may have to do that too, but you know, people have lots of rubber bands laying around in their house. I'm sure that you can find something. So you've got thick, medium, and thin. If you need to use the big long one that K-12 sent, that's fine too, but this would be better if you could find a thin one that maybe comes off your newspaper, maybe sitting around in a desk drawer, okay? I took my string and I tied my string or taped it actually to my upright, which is, yes, still my crutch. I put a, tied a knot and I put my ring, um, ring hook at the bottom. I hooked on my rubber band and put another ring hook at the bottom of that. All right. So now we're going to start. Um, we're going to measure in centimeters how long this rubber band is before it's stretched. And I'm going to record it in my data table as original length in centimeters. Then I'm going to put on the 100 grams, just like that. And I'm going to remeasure the stretch length using 100 grams, and I am going to record that in the data table. And then I'm supposed to use um, 200 grams. So I'm going to add 50, oops. And 100. <laughs> this is hard one-handed. I should have set up my uh, tripod, I guess. Okay. There we go. Then I'm going to measure it. Now I have um, 
50, 100, 150, 200 grams on here. I'm going to measure the length of the stretch rubber band. I'm going to add and I'm going to record it in my data table. And then I'm going to add 50, 100 more grams to make 300 grams. I'm going to measure the stretched rubber band and I'm going to record it in centimeters in my data table. And then I'm going to repeat that whole process with the medium rubber band and with the thick rubber band being stretched by 100, 200, and 300 grams of mass. Right? I'm going to fill out my data chart completely. And then it says to graph your data, plot mass against stretch length for each rubber band, Use a different symbol for each rubber band and make a key so you're able to tell the plots apart. So you could use, um, say, a solid dot for the thin rubber band. You could use a triangle for the medium rubber band. And you could use a square for the thick rubber band. Or you could use different colors or you could use different colored lines. Okay? So your data table will have three different lines on it. Okay, remember you're going to go over to 100 grams and then up to the stretch length. So your thin rubber band, if it's stretched 8 centimeters, <clears throat> you're going to go over to 100 and up to 8. Okay, make sure that um, for the stretch length, What you're plotting is actually the stretch length. So to find the stretch length, you're going to take the original length of the rubber band and subtract that from the stretch length. Okay? So you're going to find the amount each rubber band is stretched, and that's what you're going to plot on this graph. You're going to go over to the mass and up the amount it's been stretched. So if your thin rubber band started out at 10 centimeters and after you put 100 grams on it, it was 18 centimeters. To plot for the thin rubber band, you would go over to 100 and up to 8 because 18 centimeters minus the original 10 centimeters is 8. Okay? After you plot the thin rubber band at 100, 200, and 300, and you plot the medium and the thick rubber band for all three of those, then you can go to the analysis. Did your data agree with your hypothesis? So a yes or no isn't enough. You also need to explain why or why not. And then number seven, draw a trend line that characterizes the data for the thick rubber band. And then use your graph to predict the thick rubber band stretch length if it had a 400 gram mass attached to it. So remember we talked about best fit lines earlier on in another lab? You're going to look at your thick rubber band data and you are going to draw a straight line that is the best fit between, all, between your three data points. Okay? And then you're going to extend that line and make a good guess where it would have been if you added 400 grams to it. Okay? This lab is not very involved. It's a pretty quick lab. I hope that I explained completely what you needed to do. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know.